I'd like you to think about you and I getting on a computer and then accessing some resource. Now, resource is just a generic term for something we want. Maybe it's a, a streaming service. Maybe it's a gaming service. Maybe it's TikTok. Maybe it's, you know, uh, we want to download a file, whatever it is. Behind the scenes in the TCPIP protocol stack, there is an application layer service that's making that possible. So in this video, I'd like to chat with you about the specifics of the application layer in the TCPIP protocol stack. So to put this in context, let's go ahead and draw us at this computer. I'll call it a PC, but it could be a mobile device. It could be Linux. It could be Mac OS. It could be Windows. So you and I sitting at that computer, when we make a request for a resource behind the scenes, what the computer is really doing is leveraging some type of application layer service. And let's look at some examples of very common application layer services. One solves the problem when you and I went on this computer just a few videos ago, when we went to www.cbtnuggets.com, behind the scenes, this computer had to figure out, oh, that's a name. What is the IP address, like the street and house address, behind that name? And that was done in the background for us by using a service called DNS. And DNS is a three-letter acronym for Domain Name System. Sometimes it's referred to as Domain Name Service. And at the end of the day, DNS is all about taking a name that we put in, like www.cbtnuggets.com, and then figuring out behind the scenes what the actual IP address, like the street and house name is, for that website. And also in the TCP IP protocol stack, we just call this, this big green section right here, we just call it the application layer. Now, some vendors might call it layer seven still, based on the OSI reference model, but generally speaking, we're just gonna call it the application layer services. And DNS is one of those services. And I've got a little confession to make that'll be a lot of fun, and that's this. Earlier, when we went to cbtnuggets.com, I put a little device on the network to capture the request and the traffic so we can actually see in measurable terms this application layer service called DNS go out and make a request asking about the IP address behind the name www.cbtnuggets.com. So what we're looking at right here is a protocol analyzer output that has basically all that traffic that was going from the PC out to the network. I used a tool to capture that so we can see exactly the details of what's going on. So to filter out some of this output, so currently we have over 7,000 <laughs> 7, packets, which is a lot. I'm gonna type in DNS and press enter. And that filter will then only show us DNS, which is an application layer service, only that traffic. So there's a ton of DNS domain name system requests that were happening from that computer. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll down and find the exact one where our computer was trying to figure out the actual address behind www.cbtnuggets.com. And there it is right there. So although there's a lot of output, the focus I wanna have here for you and I is that DNS is one of the many application layer services that we could use. So here in the output, it shows domain name system. If we go down to the query and expand that, here it's showing that the computer was asking about www.cbtnuggets.com. And it also shows here that in a subsequent packet, 4101, here is the response that came back from the DNS server saying, hey, you're looking for this name. Let's scroll down, here's the answer. And it turns out that there's multiple addresses that are used for cbtnuggets.com. And then our computer could go ahead and use one of these IP addresses for the future requests to that website. So DNS, the domain name system, is one example of an application layer service that's extremely common. So in parentheses there, I'm going to put name to address because that's the function that this DNS application layer service provides to a computer is resolving a name like www.cbtnuggets.com to an actual address. Another very common service is gonna be the service of HTTP, which is an acronym for the actual protocol that's quite often used when we're doing web browsing. And there's another flavor of that called HTTPS. And think of the S as secure, and HTTPS can do the same thing, but it can do it with security. So that way, any of our conversations, if we're using HTTPS between our computer and CBT Nuggets or some other website, if we're using HTTPS, it's protected and encrypted. And if somebody's eavesdropping on that session, they won't be able to tell what we're actually carrying inside of it because it's encrypted. Also, another common name or reference for HTTPS services is SSL, which stands for Secure Sockets Layer. And a long time ago, that was literally true. We're using Secure Sockets Layer. When somebody typed in HTTPS, it was using SSL, but since then they've come up with new standards like TLS version 1.x. That stands for Transport Layer Security. We'll talk more about that later. 
And the point I want to drive home here is that these are all examples of application layer services. And also, even if somebody's using like TLS version 1.x or the computer's using TLS 1.x, a lot of times individuals and apps will still refer to it as SSL because that's like the grandfather of that type of secure web browsing functionality. And if we take a moment and go back to our PC just for a second, and we look at one of these tabs we have open, we have a little lock here. Here it says the connection is secure, and it's also showing right here that we're using HTTPS. So even though I didn't go to HTTPS, it redirected me to the secure flavor of web services. And because I captured all that traffic from that PC going out to this website, we could also see that detail in the packet captures in the protocol analyzer. And the protocol analyzer that I'm demonstrating here is called Wireshark. So here in Wireshark, if we took off the DNS and we typed in SSL and pressed enter, here it's showing us all the traffic that is under the umbrella of SSL, which would be SSL, which is really old, or some flavor of TLS, transport layer security. So if we just grabbed one of these and expanded this, here we can see that the application layer service is transport layer security. And here in the details, it's showing us that it's HTTP over transport layer security, which makes our web browsing secure. And the cool thing about this encrypted data is that only our local computer and the website that we're going to can make any sense of that encrypted data. Anybody who eavesdrops in the middle is not going to know what the data means because an attacker or an eavesdropper in the middle doesn't have the keys involved to decrypt that information. And let's also find if we can see another example of HTTP, which is not encrypted. So I'll type in HTTP for another filter. And let's go ahead and let's look at this one right here, packet 1,242. So this is showing us an application layer service of HTTP, the hypertext transfer protocol, which is often used for web browsing, but it's not encrypted. It doesn't do any encryption or decryption of the payload. So if anybody intercepts this packet on the internet, they would be able to look at the payload and see exactly what it is. So for application layer services, the three we looked at were DNS, domain name system, which allows the computer to figure out the actual address behind a name. So for me, this is a lot like 20 or 30 years ago using a phone book where you're looking up a name and you want the actual address or the phone number associated with that name. And DNS is what does that for us on the internet, resolving names to the actual IP addresses behind those names. And then HTTP, which is often used for web browsing, and HTTPS, also commonly referred to as SSL, which behind the scenes could be using SSL or TLS, that's used for secure web browsing. And again, to bring this back home, the way we triggered any of those is that you and I sat at a computer and in the browser, we simply asked for some resources and then behind the scenes, it used the appropriate application layer service to deliver that. Now there's something interesting in common between all of these application layer services, and that is they need to actually send that request, whether it's a name resolution request or web services or secure web services, they need to pass it down to the next element in the protocol stack. And the reason it's called stack is because it's a collection of protocols that work together, a set of rules that work together. So we talk about the TCPIP protocol stack. We can also refer to that as the TCPIP protocol team, <laughs> a team of protocols working together. So DNS, HTTP, or HTTPS, they need some help from another member of their team. And that's going to come from one or more protocols that are operating at layer four. And so in the very next video, I'd like to continue this discussion with you and take a closer look at some of the protocols at layer four that these application layer services are going to rely on for those applications to actually function. So I'll see you in the next video for exactly that.